and channel who are playing in the dirt tell me to take away the hurt. I'm Webster. And as you can remember, I'm not an art culturist or a botanist. I'm a retired soldier who use PTSD, who use therapy, sorry, who use therapy, um, gardening as part of my therapy for my PTSD. And today we're just gonna do a walkabout, a live walkabout of the garden in winter. So we, um, we have some people signing in. So we'll welcome. Okay guys, so I just want to welcome everybody who signed in. Remember, once you sign in, just uh, let us know where you sign in from, what state or what country. If you're in the US, you can just put the state. If it's another country, you put the country in which you're from. So we'll just get Kim down. right to the walkabout. And um, we'll just start right here on the front porch. One thing we're looking for in the winter is um, winter interest in the garden. We wanna make sure that that garden, we have what we call four season interest. That means there's something to see in the garden all year. So we have right here is a Daphne, Daphne in the winter time. And you can see it have lots of buds on it. In another month or so, this Daphne will bloom and Daphne's are highly fragrant. Daphne's are highly fragrant. We have some greenery that we have cut it in conical shape or in a round ball. Hello, Senora Trump. Thank you for joining us. And also, we have this um, Italian Cypress. So most of the other flower has gone dormant. Uh, Kim Dong, Kim Dong, good morning and welcome. Like the Japanese maple, we have others that's pretty much dead for this year. <laughs> It may or may not come back, and that's the Persian prince. If you remember uh, the purple Persian prince. Of course, the hydrangea. And I didn't cut my hydrangea yet, and I'll just leave it up all through the winter until spring when I'll cut these uh, blooms off, these moped, because you still get some winter interest. And as I said on um, Instagram, brown is also a color. <laughs> so don't be afraid when you have brown in the garden. There's something to look at also. Another point on Daphne, I was told that if you want to plant a Daphne, you buy three and one will survive. Okay, so we have a big Daphne right here in the back that's surviving beautifully. But the other two that I plant are dead. Okay, and I separate, I try to get a second one here, but it's struggling, but we'll see how that goes. Okay, we have Felanese, Felani Bella Ford. Thank you so much for joining us. And in Point Dexter in Virginia, thank you. Jahavi, hello. 
Hello from India. Thank you so much for uh, spending some time with us from India. Ah, thank you. <laughs> Your garden is nice. Thank you so much. Okay, and we're making a few changes to the garden. We get some uh, roses that we put up front here. This one we have here is a marvelous. And we've got two marvelous. And then we got two in the back here, which are Burgundy Iceberg. It's a Burgundy Iceberg. Uh, I removed the other butterfly flowers, which was the Anne Isop that we have up front here. Hello from Russia. Thank you for joining us. And also Moonlight 321. Glad to see you. Happy to see you too. So there we have the front garden. It's very cold here in Georgia. Currently, the temperature is 36 degrees. What the weather said, the actual wind chill, what it feels like is 32. So it's very cold. There was frost on the ground all this morning. Hello, Jackie. Thank you for joining us. I got more Spanish moss for my maple tree up front here. Provide interest in the winter. Look quite uh, skeletal. Okay, uh, Jahanvi asked, where are you from? Well, Jahanvi, I garden here in Georgia, USA, in zone 7B. I was born in Jamaica <laughs> and migrated to the States a long time ago. <laughs> okay. Now, from the front, what we have here is <laughs> Jamaican in the house. Thank you, Jackie. Representing, enough respect. Okay, so we have right here Italian Cyprus. And we got two on both sides of the driveway. Okay, from Roman Dempsey. Hello, my therapy garden. I love, love, love seeing you live on video. Makes me feel like I'm in the garden. Thank you so much, Roman. <laughs> okay, and um, more Spanish moss in the maple tree. And if we just come along to the east side garden, of course it's winter, so the grass is now brown. And um, most of the flower are going M from Trinidad and Tobago. Thank you for joining us. All the best to you and your family. Stay safe, Dolo M. Nice to have you here with us. This is a Japanese maple, Tamukiyama. Now it's leafless. So I give you a sculptural look in the garden. So the east side garden, we have more Japanese maple right here. This one is Asia Gone Wild. But another thing we have to make sure we have in the garden is um, flower like um, Halliburis or otherwise called lintel rose, because these will flower at winter time. And as you can see, the leaves are all green. So that's more winter interest. And the flower right there is coming up. And I have it sub, uh, surrounded, surrounding my little uh, Japanese lantern here. more Japanese maple for that skeleton look <laughs> in the garden. This one is a full moon maple. For greenery, boxwood. Okay, always have your boxwood. And this one's a variegated English boxwood. So that gives some color. So not just greenery, but color. 
So that yellow and green make it nice and beautiful in the garden. Another Japanese maple. This one is a Michael Jaku. Michael Jaku. So also called common name dancing peacock, which is a fern leaf maple. Some verbena here. I had an evergreen right here, which was a green penguin which it died, so I will replace it right here with another uh, conifer. We got a new conifer here. And this is a horseman silverlock fir. And as you can see on this fir, it looks frosted. The leaves curl. So the back of the leaves curl over and you can see the back of it, which gives you that frosty look. So you get that silver look in the garden and the turning of the leaves make it quite different. To end the east side garden, I have a conifer here, which I'll be putting in pretty soon. And in this pot here is another conifer. This is a Chemiciparus cripsi. Chemiciparus cripsi. Okay, thank you, Pandemic uh, Greenhouse. Uh, nice walkthrough. Thank you for joining us. Uh, Jahavi said, Would you like to visit India? I would love to visit India. I would love, love, love to visit India. You guys have some great temples, which I would love to see. <laughs> okay. And as we pan around here, we come to the other side of the east side garden, which is my conifer garden. Here we have different type of conifers. And we know that conifers are cone bearing trees. Conifers for the most part, are evergreen so they'll keep their leaves or their needle all year we have a few of them like um, cypress like the bald cypress which will lose their leaf and a few others but for the most part your conifers will keep their leaves all through the year so it's good to have conifer in the garden conifer come in different color you'll have a deep green you'll have the chartreuse Lime green, you'll have yellow, and like the silver lock uh, that we just showed you, you'll get that uh, silvery color. We have a yew right here. We have a weeping blue spruce. This is a moped cypress. This tall one here, Italian Cypress. Inoki Cypress. Another mop head. Beautiful yellow with the mop head. Contrasts nicely with the greens right here. That small Christmas tree is a dwarf Alberta Spruce. Another Japanese uh, maple right here. This is Sharp's Pygmy. This one is um, this is a fire chief. It's called a fire chief. And right in front of it is a golden promise. It's a Cryptomeria japonica, golden promise. This Cryptomeria japonica is dead. Um, I ordered a tree from Conifer Kingdom to put there. So the other one I got is a silver lock, also, Horseman Silver Lock, like this one on this side. So that one is coming 
Once I get that, I'll do an unboxing so you can see that one. So we'll put it on the other side to match it on this side right here, the another Horseman Silver Lock, which is coming. Okay, Jahavi, we also like to visit your garden and I love having you here. Jahavi, please invite all your friends and family to visit the garden. Let them know we're alive. Uh, if they can't come now, they can always watch it later on and we can talk about gardening. That's the beauty of gardening. We don't have to be in the same place, but we can always garden, make our world more beautiful and we can talk about tips for gardening. This is a small muga pine right there. A ginkgo biloba. It was beautiful about a month ago with all the yellow leaves. All the leaves fall off like a sculpture. Another Enoki cypress. Behind it is a black pine. And that's the Arnold Sentinel black pine. a small pancake arborvitae and behind it another Japanese maple this is our peaches and cream another pine tree kotobuki and beside it is a fern spray we have a deodor cedar Feeling blue, Deodor cedar. The Deodor cedar here is a weeping Deodor cedar. So it will grow as tall as you stake it. So I'm trying to get it to go maybe about six feet and then I'll just let it flow over. Besides another arborvitae, Hetz midget. And then this beautiful golden one, forever goldy arborvitae. Another Alberta Dwarf Spruce. It's midget behind it. And this is a Juniper. Blue Point Juniper. Which this uh, conifer garden uh, this fall and new to the garden is this beautiful yellow Diador Cedar. Beautiful yellow highlights on it. I got a small Japanese umbrella pine, which I'm hoping that it will make it, it will be strong enough this fall make it through the winter so it can survive our hot, humid summers. Because Japanese umbrella pine, it likes morning sun but afternoon shade. But right here, it's gonna get <laughs> morning sun, afternoon sun. <laughs> so it will be very hot for it. But with most pines, pin, and then it should survive my hot Georgia summer. So there we have, that's a conifer garden. Right over here is one of our pollinators garden. Remember we asked you guys, <laughs> can I visit your garden? Sure, Jahavi, you can visit my garden anytime on YouTube. And if you're over in the state of, the state of Georgia here in the US, <laughs> just give me a call <laughs> and we can always arrange a visit. I would love that. That would be awesome. So that's my pollinated garden right here. For this year, new for the next uh, growing season, I want to put a prairie garden right here. A prairie garden. So what a prairie garden would be is just like different wild wildflowers, grass and wildflowers. 
and I'm going to try something new. I'm going to try the no dig method. So I cover it now with black, um, with black, uh, what do you call it? Weed suppressor. So just a weed fabric here. And then I'll just uh, spread the seed. Just put some dirt on top. Uh, spread the seed just to cover it. And we'll see how that go. And it's an experiment. I've never tried the no dig method. But when you're gardening, you try different things, different plant, different method. Here's the back garden. We're expanding the back garden. This beautiful yellow one, I got this from Mr. Maple. And that's called a Barima Gold, which is a golden incense cedar. And incense cedar have a nice strong, uh, fragrance when you crush the leaves. And of course, the golden color is awesome, especially in the winter time. Here we have a gardenia, which is a tree gardenia. Behind it, lots of uh, roses. You can go to my garden tour for the back garden and you can see these roses in spring and summer. Okay, Jahavi. Okay. And Jackie, is your garden open to the public? <laughs> right now it's not Jackie, just for friends and family. <laughs> but you can also, you can always visit the garden online <laughs> and of course once this pandemic is over we can always have more people over visiting the garden but we're just starting so it's a very young garden right now i've been gardening just two years the back garden lots of the rows here of course all the leaves fall off and the rows are going dormant most of these roses back here are hybrid tea roses, and a few, a few floribunda. That's a euphorbia, rainbow euphorbia. Still beautiful in the winter. And to keep the garden still looking green and having some greenery. That's a Japanese holly, a Japanese holly. Look pretty much like a boxwood, but it's Japanese holly. My statue here, we call him Standing Boy, and surrounding him is lavender. Uh, lavender, you can keep your lavender growing all year, and they, should, they might survive your winter, especially in a, a zone seven or higher. Of course, Jeff Harvey, you're my friend. Like I said, when you visit here, you can visit the garden. <laughs> Okay, um, but with your lavender, you have to make sure that you don't cut it back too hard. You don't want to take off more than one third of your lavender. Because if you cut in the woody section, and if you look at your lavender, you'll see the woody section, or it's uh, very brown down there. You don't want to cut down so far. You want to cut where it's still green. Cut in the woody section, then your lavender will be susceptible to diseases and it may die. You don't want to take that chance with your beautiful lavender. So if you're going to cut it back, no more than a third of your lavender. And that's the back garden. Right in the middle here is our fountain. <clears throat> we just put in this fountain this summer and one of my subscriber and, and in Ohio, she uh, sent me some irises, which I surround my um, fountain with different type of irises, which I know will look beautiful come spring and fall. Also new, right here, I covered this walk section here. It was getting too narrow for the lawnmower. 
So I just mulch over all this. I did the same thing. I just cover the grass with a weed fabric and then just mulch it over. So later on, we can plant up <clears throat> right along here. So extending the garden a bit. My three tier topiary right at my back porch door. It's an Alberta dwarf spruce. Some sedum, autumn joy sedum, which I'll leave these up. I'll cut it back come spring. Just again, something for the garden. You can still have some interest in the garden. Uh, the birds can come and pick on the seed. They can use these little things right here as feathering for their bed. So you leave that up for your wildlife and it gives you something to look at in the garden. This is my first maple, um, my first pollinator's garden. My first pollinator's garden. And this is where I plant most of my daffodils. A lot of my daffodils and tulips are in this section right here. So it should be a glorious spring. <laughs> it should be beautiful. We have this uh, oak tree here, which I got Spanish moss and put it all over. I have a video on Spanish moss. You can check that out to know how to grow and maintain your Spanish moss. Thank you, Ray's Place. Beautiful garden, like always. I appreciate that. And then in the back, what I have is a hill. It's a hill. So I have trees and um, little flowering plants like uh, azalea, this encore azalea right here. Thank you, uh, Senora Trump. You have a great day too. Thank you so much. As you can see, the bird bath here is frozen. It's very cold. Ah, the sun. A weeping cherry. That red bark is a sangokaku, Japanese maple. It's famous for the red bark that it has. Tintin Gardener, what's up? <laughs> Thank you for joining us there. <laughs> More Japanese maple. That's a crimson queen. A Japanese maple and greenery, camellia. Camellia are evergreen. It's great to have in the garden. The leaves won't fall off, they'll stay green. And of course, camellia flower in the winter. So you can see. A few flower there. This is a native azalea, Tallulah sunrise. More azalea greenery. So we have some conifers up here. That's white pine with the golden highlights. It's just a year old now, so it's very small. Most of the plants I have here are very small. The bigger the plants, the bigger the hole that you have to dig to put them in. And in this clay, oh, it's very hard to dig. So if I get them small, I dig a small hole and they can, in time, grow. And like I told you guys before, that's one of the things I learned in my um, gardening, is that it teaches patience. You know, with my PTSD, that's one thing I didn't have because I want results right now. So it teaches patience. So I get these smaller trees and I have to wait for them to take their time and grow. <laughs> Walking on the hill. Okay. 
not every day, Jehavi, but I'll try to go live as much as I can when there's something to look at. Okay, Tintin Gardener, agreeing. Uh, PTSD actually help you to be patient. Happy Saturday, Mel Skinner. Thank you for joining us. This is a, a Skylark. Let me get the name. Skyland Oriental Spruce. Skyland Oriental Spruce. And this will be a big tree eventually. It will get to about 20, 25 feet tall. I got this in spring. It hasn't grown much because they're slow growers. But uh, in gardening, it says the first year they sleep, the second year they creep, and the third year they leap. So most of my plants should be creeping come spring. And um, for those that I plant early, because next 2021, gonna be three years that I start the garden. Like the roses and those, that will be three years in the ground. But most of these small trees just going into their second season. We have another weeping white pine here with golden highlights. That one is called Louis. And the first one was Sylvester. This one is Louis. My hydrangeas. A little flower still hanging on. This is a Chinese snowball. I have three of them. Chinese snowball. In spring, they have big mop head flower, big white mop head, looking like hydrangea. So if you love hydrangea, this is a plant that you can just like an hydrangea. This is a Monterey Cypress that we have here. I bought this at Lowe's, believe it or not, for $15. Monterey Cypress. A big sugar maple is doing very well. Sugar maple are fast growers and this one was about two feet tall when I planted it and as you can see in just a season look at it getting so big so by next spring summer it's going to be a big tree that hopefully can start providing some shade for the smaller trees that I have here on the hill. I have a small Japanese maple right here. Shishigashira, which is also called Lionhead. I knew I just got this this fall. A smoke bush. A smoke bush. Okay guys, so oh that's a CRU, Japanese maple. That's my hill. Hillside garden. Okay, Tintin. Tin. Can garden, yes, <laughs> you know, uh, he saw from PTSD too, and he said that gardening helped him. So thank you for pointing that out. And um, as we garden, we will get better because it's just one of the therapy, uh, especially for PTSD. Jahavi said, I am a big fan of yours because you gave us long time you give us comments. <laughs> That's your hobby too. Garden is your hobby. Uh, thank you so much, Jahavi. Um, any questions you have, please drop me a line. You know, I answer every question I answer. It may not be the same day, but by three days, I go through and I make sure I answer all questions. And if you have a comment, 
how to make this channel better. Of course, I welcome that also. Jahavi, I'm very inspired from you. Thank you, thank you. I'm inspired by you too, you know, because as we garden, you know, I always say we make the world more beautiful than we found it.